What is going on everybody? How you doing? How's everybody doing? What is going on? What's going on guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome. What is going on people? Welcome. If you are just hopping in, welcome. Let's give it up for Jesus, man. Let's give Jesus a round of applause, man. Welcome guys. I am so excited to be here. Y'all welcome to another detoxified Bible study, man. I am so excited to be in the house of God. Y'all know that the house of God is wherever you are. It's wherever you live. It's wherever you do things, it's wherever you function. The house of God is wherever you go. The Bible says in John chapter 14 that the spirit of God lives on the inside of us. So wherever we go, the house of God is with us. I just want to say welcome on behalf of TDM Global, the Detox Movement, and the Detox Movement Global Ministries. Welcome to our Bible study. My name is Javer Fitzbogle, and I am the creative director of the Detox Movement Global Ministries, and this is our Bible study. Y'all, let's give Jesus a round of applause, man. Yo, we have been growing, man. We have been growing. I'm talking about like leaps and bounds. Each and every single day, I'm seeing how God is doing such an amazing and miraculous work. And it's been an absolute blessing just to watch it, man. I want to just take a moment and I wanted to thank each and every single one of you that have been a part of what God has been doing in this ministry. For all of y'all that have been rocking with us since day one, listen, I just personally wanted to say thank you. Some of you heard from me today. I sent some of you guys a message and I'm telling you that God is like been just taking us from one level of glory to the next level of glory. And we're just so honored and privileged to come together every single week and to share this message of Jesus Christ. I just personally wanted to say shout out to every single person that is on here. We are now streaming on three, is it three? Three different platforms. We are on YouTube. We are on Facebook Live. We on Instagram. Oh, that's four. We on Zoom, man. I tell you, God is just doing so much, man. And I'm just so excited. I'm so proud of you guys. And I'm so honored to be a part of this movement and what God is doing in this ministry. Listen, I want to now jump into our weekly thing. Now, y'all know we do this thing every single week. I mean every single week where we want to know how you guys are doing. I just want to say, if you are having an amazing day, I want to see it in the comment section right now. Give me one word or one emoji to explain to me how you are feeling. One word or one emoji to explain how you're feeling. I want to know how you're feeling. If you're on Facebook, put it in the Facebook section. If you're on IG Live, yo, what's up, man? What's happening with you guys? Put it in the comment section. If you're on YouTube, put it in the comment section. If you're on Zoom, put it in the comment section. I want to see how everybody is doing. Oh, I love it. Oh, we got some smiles in the house. Oh, smiley faces. Oh, I love it. We got this strong emoji. I love that too. Man, you're looking great today, man. I appreciate you guys, man. Wow, you had an amazing week. I love that. God is good. Man, I love that all the time, man. God is holding it down, y'all. I'm just so honored. And today is a beautiful day because we are now diving into our last message in our series entitled Insecure. Y'all don't know, man, this has been crazy. We have learned together on what it means and what it looks like to come together under an idea that people are talking about being insecure. Like, what does it mean to be insecure? Why are you insecure? Why are people insecure? What does it mean to be insecure and to be secure in Christ? This whole sermon, this whole sermon series has been about learning that we all have insecurities. And even though we all have insecurities, it is those insecurities that cause us to be dependent on God. And so today is literally week number five, where we've dived into this series. And let me tell you something, it's, it's, it's going to be a good one. I'm feeling this one in my spirit. Last we had talked in week one, we talked about the voice of security. And that was something that was huge for us because we finally got to learn what it meant to understand what it means to be completely, excuse me, completely dependent upon God. And when God comes into your life, he says, listen, I want to come to you in a certain type of place where you are so low in your understanding that you need something big. You need a big God to come in and give you revelation to see things you could not have otherwise seen on your own. 
And so the voice of security was big for us. Then we dived into 1%. Now, 1% was huge. How do you love 1%? We got some amazing feedback on that teaching entire 1% where we learn that we are 1% and God is our 99. And at times we feel low, God completes us. He is the reason that certain things happen. He is that 99% to our 1%. And all he requires of us is that we have, that we give him 100% of our 1%. That was big for us. We finally got to a place where we realized that it's okay to go through different things. It's okay to go through adversity. It's okay to go through different types of trauma and heartbreak. It's okay to go through these things when you realize who is in there with you. Now we dive into our next series, which was entitled Insecure. And this one hit different for some of y'all. Because you're like, man, I don't know what it feels like. But sometimes I feel so insecure in who I am and who God has called me to be. But, but God wants you to be in security and that message was teaching us that although we might be insecure God has given us a level of security in him and we find that security in Christ Jesus so powerful and then we dived into last week's message what was titled the sin of insecurity now this one affected me hard this one hit me like a ton of bricks because I thought to myself like man is it possible for my insecurities to hinder my progression with God, to hinder my faith, to hinder my walk. And we learned last week that even your insecurities will hinder your progress and the process of you growing in your faith if you allow them to. And then today, we dive into something special. If you get your Bibles out, we're going to be diving right into this word today. This word hit home for me as I was studying. I did not know where God was taking us in this series, but he helped to give us so much clarity and understanding in the process when we finally got to a place where we're saying, wow, God, what next? Now I'm at a place where I've learned all about what this security is, what insecurity is. Like, God, what next? Now all everything is on the inside. What is next when everything is on the inside? You handle what? The outside. Today's lesson is entitled Clothed in Security. Clothed in Security. Because I believe that once you figure out how to handle your insecurities that is inside of you, there's something that has to happen on the outside of you. And God does a work on the inside so that it can manifest on the outside. This lesson is entitled Clothed in Security. So get your Bibles out. Get your notepads out. Whatever platform you're on, if you're just coming in right now, welcome. I want you to get your Bibles out. We're going to be diving into Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3. Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3. But we're going to talk about the last verse in Genesis chapter 2, which is Genesis chapter 2, verse 25. And we're going to start reading also from Genesis chapter 3 up to verse 11 and verse 21. A lot of jumping going around here. But what I do know is that God is going to do a supernatural work in us. Amen. So check this out, y'all. This is going to hit different. Genesis chapter 2, verse 25. Now, many of you are familiar with Adam and Eve. Y'all know what Adam and Eve is about. Y'all know that there was a man called Adam and then someone out came, someone came out of him called Eve. We're going to briefly talk about that today. And how does that title relate to our message talking about insecurities? Genesis chapter 2 and verse 25. I'm going to start reading from there into chapter 3 and we're going to end on verse 21. Let's read together. So it says now in the end of Genesis chapter 2, verse 25, And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Verse 1, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the beasts on the field the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say to you, Now you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, May we that we may eat of any tree and any fruit in the garden, but except one. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle or the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you will die. Verse 4. But the serpent then said to the woman, You will not die shortly, but 
God knows that when and if you eat this fruit, that your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Mm. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delightful to the eyes, and then that tree that was to be desired to make one wise, she took of this fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then verse 7, then the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were both naked. Mm. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths, clothing. Verse 8, and they heard the sound of the Lord was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. Verse 9, but the Lord God called to man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid, but I was naked and I hid myself. I hid myself. Verse 11. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Jump down with me to verse 21. Verse 21 says, and the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins. And he then clothed them. Let's pray together, y'all. Father, we thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. God, we thank you because you have written our lives even before we were born. We thank you, Father, because we know that you have brought us to even today to listen to this message, to get a word from you, Father. I pray, God, that you would speak to each and every single one of us watching all over the world right now. Father, I pray that you would touch us in different types of ways. Give us revelation and knowledge and understanding to understand your word as you see fit. Father, I humble myself in this moment so that your word can be exalted. Father, let those who have ears to hear listen and help those who need to listen receive in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say amen. I love it, y'all. Listen, this message is going to hit different. Because I was at home the other day and I was reading some scriptures, right? Spending time my word because, you know, this is what we do. We read, you know, Christian men, people try to be men of God. You read, you spend time in scripture. And as I was reading, I can't figure out why God brought me to Genesis. Now, we talk about this all the time, like God brought me to this scripture. No, God literally brought me to Genesis. Because I don't normally read Genesis. Genesis is such a heavily packed um, uh, uh, book. There's so much uh, uh, theology in there. There's so much um, um, dogma in there. There's so much doctrine in there. I don't normally speak from this. But I saw something in there that really hit me different as I was reading about insecurities. And I began to ask myself this question like, yo, where, where did insecurities actually come from? Like, where do they come from? Because now we're struggling today internally, but something had to happen a long time ago that put us in this position and it brought me to Adam and Eve. Now I'm going to begin this little, little backstory here that we know that God created man. And this was prior right after we understand that creation was made and that's creation come into fruition. Now we're at a place, man is here and man is uber lonely. Now my brothers, y'all can relate. Put your hands up, put your little, you know, waves up if you're on the ground or if you're on whatever. Like, y'all can relate. You know when it's hard. And you're looking for somebody to spend your time with. Adam was by himself. And, of course, we heard the famous scripture when God says that it's not good for man to be alone. And so we find ourselves in the garden. And very important to note, and I think I said this a few weeks ago, the devil has always been there prior to man being present. The devil has always been there. It's interesting to note that the devil was in the same place where Adam was, but he did absolutely nothing with Adam. But the devil decided to move the moment that he saw something else come along. What came along? It was woman. All my ladies say, hey, we here now. And what happens is the devil is so crafty that he leaves man alone, but when he sees that there's an opportunity for multiplication, he then steps in at the moment where things can change. So God sees that it's not good for man to be alone, so then he gives him, he gives them a wife. Now we're gonna start reading our, our lesson here from verse 25, chapter two, Genesis chapter two and verse 25. It says now, and the man and his wife were both naked and they were not ashamed. Now, this took me back 
Because I remember, and I hope my brothers and my sisters are not on any of these platforms, so I'm about to come for their necks right now. I remember when my little brother, let's go, I'll go for my brother. I ain't gonna do my sister like that. I remember when my little brother, he was about like, yay tall, probably, you know what I'm saying? He was just a little jit jittling, you know what I'm saying? And I remember when he came out the womb, he was like the size of my hand. Literally raised that kid up till one day he was able to walk. This is my first experience now. I was young, you know what I'm saying? Very young. I was only about 10, 11, 8 years older than my brother. So, you know, I was able to do my own. I was able to comprehend. I remember one specific time. Poor Gabriel didn't even know what was happening. He literally took off his diaper one day when he got mad. He said, I don't want to use the bathroom. And he took off his diaper and took off all his clothes. And he ran around the house butt naked. Butt naked. I mean, butt naked. Poor kid didn't even know what was going on. And I looked at him, I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Put some clothes on, man. Like, y'all know when, when your kids are running, if you have kids, when they're running around the house, kids have a tendency to run around the house naked. They, they have no shame in their game. They run around naked because they are unashamed of the fact that they are naked. All the parents in the house know exactly what I'm talking about. Why do your kids have the audacity to run around naked? Because they are unashamed of who they are. This is so powerful. Because we then come to understand in verse 25, it says, And the man and his wife were both naked and they were not ashamed. Now this hits different. Because the Bible tells us, number one, that man was naked. Number two, it tells us that they were unashamed. Which leads me to understand that God created man to be naked and unashamed. Write this point down. You were created naked, but you were also created unashamed. Now, the reason this carries so much weight, and we have to grab a hold of this in Scripture, is because the way you were created is the way that you're supposed to see yourself. And if you don't see yourself the way you were created, not only will you mishandle God's creation in yourself, but you will not be able to experience the goodness of how he created you, which is to be unashamed. So now we're standing here in scripture and we're getting a full synopsis that my dude Adam was naked, that my girl Eve, she was naked, but they weren't just naked, but they was bold with it. Like to all my unsaved people out there, I'm in the boat with y'all. I went to a naked beach once. One time, one time. It was crazy. It's a little fun story. It's going to help you out, okay? This wasn't before Christ. This is when I was in Christ and I was struggling to be who God called me to be. But watch this. I remember one time I went to the beach. This is my first. I had no idea that these beaches exist. My boy's like, yo, we going to the beach? He's like, down, down, bet, let's go. Got into the crib, got to the beach, had my whole chunk on my stuff. I was ready. I walked out there like, yo, I'm ready for this water, son. I get up there and I see someone streaking. I said, yo! Dude, there's somebody out here. And I freaked out because I thought that it wasn't normal. And then I come to realize that it wasn't just one. It was two. It wasn't just two. It was three. It was a whole bunch of people was naked on the beach. I said, yo, I got to go. And I did not feel uncomfortable until I realized that something wasn't normal. It is in that place where you realize that something isn't normal. That you can finally realize that, hey, there's something that we have to do. You were created naked, but you were also created unashamed. Unashamed of what? You were created unashamed of your nakedness. What is nakedness? Nakedness comes from the Hebrew word erwa, which means nudity. It also refers to absolute nakedness or the uncovering of something. This is so powerful because we cannot move forward in understanding why Adam was naked and unashamed until we realize that they were uncovered. Now, seemingly so, we read this scripture, it would come across as if because they were uncovered that this is a spiritual metaphor. But in this particular verse, we have to understand that they were uncovered naturally. They were not uncovered spiritually. Mm, stay with me. Meaning they didn't have clothes on. But there was something else that was going on that allowed them to feel like something was normal. Why is that? 
Because when you are in a place where something is normal, you always feel naked. Unnormal, when something is not normal, you always feel naked. But when you're in a place where something feels natural like a baby, you always feel safe. You always feel covered. Picture this. You see a baby. He's running around the house. And you're wondering to yourself, why is he not worried about running around the house naked like what if he does this outside? I've never seen a child really, and it's not like it's not possible, but it's always interesting. A child always runs around naked in a place that's safe. Have y'all ever noticed that? The kids always tend to run around naked in places that they're safe and they're comfortable with because they feel a sense of covering. When some people do not understand what it means to be naked, sometimes they miss the idea of what it means to be insecure. And it, it mean, they miss the idea of what it means to live in your insecurities. To be ashamed of who you are means that you do not realize who God made you to be. But when you realize who God made you to be, you always function in confidence. This metaphor of understanding what nakedness looked like refers to people who have insecurities. Stay with me, because what's important for us to grab here is that Adam and Eve was naked. They had always been naked, but they did not see themselves as naked. This is so good. Adam and Eve loved who they were. They loved who, who God had created them to be. And because they loved who they, said, who they were, they were able to put themselves in a position to love God the right way and to love how he made them. And ultimately, they felt insecure. I want you to write this question down today. What is your nakedness? And how do you see yourself with that nakedness? For some of you here today, nakedness is not just taking clothes off. But for some of you, nakedness is a place where you're most vulnerable, where you're exposed, where you're not covered, where you can't roam around free because you doesn't feel like this is who you were created to be. When you are naked, you are most vulnerable. But it is in this place of being most vulnerable that God says, this is how I created you to be. I created you to be vulnerable because you were designed to be completely dependent upon me. Adam and Eve were naked for many different reasons. But for one, it's because they did not need clothing. Wow, this hits so different. Not only did they not need clothing, but they did not need anything else that they did not need to know of. So all God wanted Adam and Eve to know was you, all you need is me. In this space of being naked and exposed, all you need is me. Don't worry about what you wear. Don't worry about any of that stuff. All you need to know is that I have created you naked. And because I created you this way and you are in Christ Jesus, you are not only naked, but you are unashamed of how I created you. The way that the world has perverted it today is that many of us are ashamed of what we were created to be. Some of us were created to be artists of all different types, creators, different types of creators, musicians, People who are eloquent with their tongues. People who have a gift to teach, a gift to, to, to bless others, a gift to encourage. God has created you a certain type of way, but some of us don't want to stand out. But we want to stand in because the world comes in and, and, and literally perverts the image of what God had created that was perfect. We get to a place here where we realize that Adam and Eve were created perfect in their nakedness in their insecurity of who they were. They were created perfect in that vantage point just so they can get to a place of confidence in Christ. And because of how God made them, he gave them all they needed to become the unashamed Christians that they were. I want to ask you guys this question today. Who has God made you to be that you are now ashamed of? Because there is something on the inside of you, even on the outside of you, that you might be so ashamed of, that you can't properly function in confidence and awareness in because you are in a place of nakedness, but you are unashamed of your nakedness. This hits home for me. This really kind of sits in a different place. So let's jump in to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than other beasts on the field and the Lord God had made. Why was he crafty? 
He was crafty because he did things ways that were so cunning and deceitful. He was just able to maneuver differently. And we're not going to talk about this theologically speaking on whether or not he was a snake, but it says that he was a serpent. So he moved in a serpentine, serpentine type of manner. He was sly with his actions. He was very slick. He was cunning. He was intelligent. He knew exactly how to come to a place where Adam and Eve was, where they were naked. And so it says that he was crafty. And he was crafty more than anything else that God had made in terms of the animals and the beasts. And he said to the woman, God, did God actually say to you that you should not eat of any tree in the garden? Now, this is important. This is so important because it lets us know and it lets us understand that the way God has made us, that the way God has made us is literally, he sees us as a type of creation that he's given us everything that we need to maneuver around him. And when the devil comes into our lives, when Satan tries to confront you, he will always come at you in a place that you are most naked and vulnerable. And he comes to Adam and Eve at a place of nakedness. Why? Because he came to them where it was the only place where God had told them, hey, you can do all of this and all of that, but you can't do this. The tree represented so many things, but it also represented that place of nakedness for Adam and Eve because they had no idea what would really happen if they did not obey. Now, God told them, if you obey, you're going to die. But what the devil does is he comes in a certain type of way to confuse you. And so I'm going to give you three points that the devil always does when he wants to break you down in your nakedness. Point number one, Satan will always take what God says about you and he will trap you in your own thoughts. He will always take what God says about you and he will trap you in your own thoughts. He literally came to Eve. In the same place that God spoke to her. God said, don't touch. So Satan came at a place where it didn't, did God really say not to touch everything? The crazy thing in this is that he clearly added something to where God did not say. The problem where a lot of us kind of stumble here is we get into a place where God is speaking to us. And we miss the trajectory of what he's saying when the devil comes in, he adds something to the equation. No. I don't want you to go over to that dude's house. And Satan comes in, did he really say that you shouldn't go over there today? No, 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 no. I don't want you to go over there and buy that specific item. Did he really say you should never buy it? The devil is so cunning, he always comes at a place of vulnerability where you're weak and you don't know what to do. In verse 2, we see... That the, that we, verse 2, we see that this is exactly what happened. And the woman said to the serpent that we may eat of the fruit... And the trees of the garden, but God said, you should not eat of the fruit or the trees in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die, lest you die. So she knew exactly that what he was saying was something to where God said, but she fell into the one thing that we should never, ever, ever do. She fell into conversation with the enemy. Now, this is where a lot of us fall short. The devil will always come to you at a place of your insecurity. Not just to, to get in and to manipulate you and to destroy you, but to distract you from what you know is right. The Bible says that your spirit bears witness on the inside of you. Meaning there's always something on the inside of you that shows you left from right and right from wrong. And he comes into this place and, and he comes into this equation with Eve and he has a conversation with her and she indulges in that conversation. That's the one thing I'm going to encourage everybody listening here today. Don't have conversation with the devil. It does not mean that the devil will not seek you out and find you and try to break you down and try to sort of do certain things. The devil will always try to come at you in different types of ways, especially in your nakedness. But do not have conversation with the devil. The Bible says that when Jesus was tempted... And as he was tempted, we see that, the, that Satan came in to tempt him. And as he came in to tempt him, he couldn't even ask him questions. He said, well, if this is you, if you're the son of God, then turn this bread into stone. If you are the child, the son of God, then jump over for the word says, for the word says, for the word says. And Jesus always combated with God's word. He never entertained conversation for the devil. Why? Because the devil is always looking for your nakedness. It is 
in his ability to look for your nakedness and he finds a way to get you to eat from things that God never intended for you to eat from. Point number two, the devil will always try to have conversation instead of confrontation. We see that this is something that is so, uh, it's so characteristic of how the devil operates. Because often what he does is he tries to lure you into a place to where he can just try to rationalize things with you. Okay, well, I really don't think that you can, you know, you're going to get in trouble for this. I think you can actually get away. I think that what you should do is you really should, so, you know, just spend some time with them. Spend some time with her. Spend some time with those drugs. Spend some time watching that thing you really should. Just, just spend some time. And the more he talks to you is the more he ushers confusion to the word that God already gave you. The devil will always come in to abduct you in your nakedness. I was talking to my friend the other day and I told her, I was like, yo, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, this kind of hit me different. So David was very strong in certain areas. Like we know how strong he was with lions against the bears, against Goliath, against all these different things. But David had a lot of private struggles. A lot of struggles with women, a lot of struggles with relationships. David struggled in a lot of areas. And although we don't know him primarily for his struggles and we know him for his actual accomplishments, it hit me different. Every person is strong in the things that they're strong at. It seems like it's, so, it's something so big, but it's really so small. Everybody's strong at things that they're strong at. The devil does not often come to you in a place of your strength, but he often comes to you in a place of your nakedness. As he found Eve in a place of her nakedness, he found Adam in a place of his nakedness. He will often come to you in a place of your nakedness because that's often the place that he can manipulate you the most. What is your nakedness, your insecurities? He will find you in the place of your insecurity so that he can manipulate you because that is where you are most weak. But I've come here today to tell you. That although you might be weak in a certain area, you are strong with your faith in God. Place your faith in Jesus and he will allow you to overcome by the blood of the Lamb. He will allow you to overcome by the blood of his Son. It is through Christ Jesus and Jesus alone that you can overcome, not by your own strength. You must become that one percent. And so we see that he came for them. He came for them in a place of their weakness. And it began to attack them in a certain type of way. Verse 4 says, But the serpent then said to the woman, You shall not surely die, for God knows that when you eat, your eyes will then be open. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, which is so interesting because she saw the tree many, many times before, but now she saw that it was good for food. The devil will always come in and manipulate what God already told you. Why? Because he will find ways in. The Bible says that God, Jesus is the good shepherd, that he stands at the door and nothing gets in through the front of the sheepfold. Why? Because the sheep are inside of the sheepfold and Jesus stands at the door. But what does the devil do? What does any good thief do? A good thief never goes through the front door. A good thief will always go through the back door. They'll always find cracks. They'll always find ways in. They'll always look for crevices. They will look for places you are most weak and most vulnerable. The most vulnerable part of any type of prey is their stomach. It is the lower area of their body. Why? Because there's less muscle and that's where it's most exposed. That is the area of their nakedness. Every single animal has nakedness in, the, the, in weaker areas of their body. What it matter if it's a rhinoceros? It don't matter if it's a hippo. Everyone has weaknesses. And so God comes in. He says, although you were created in this area of weakness, you were not designed and created to be weak, but you were designed and created to be unashamed in how I created you. I heard the Lord say as I was creating this message that he is going to use your greatest weakness for your greatest strength. That people are going to be changed, that lives are going to be impacted, that people are going to come to God just because of your weakness, not because of your strength. It is in that place of nakedness that God can be found most. Why? Because it was the nakedness of Adam and Eve where God's covering was present. It was the nakedness of Adam and Eve where his covering was present. Although they were naked in the garden, they were covered by the blood of Jesus. 
to the point where they couldn't even identify their own nakedness. They were so naked, like freelancing, like nude on the beach type naked, but they couldn't see it because they were covered by God himself. God will always cover you in a place of your nakedness. And the reason why God will cover you is because that is the covering that you need. Every single person needs covering. Write that down. Every single person needs covering. And in the place that you are most naked and vulnerable is the place where you need covering the most. Because that is the place where the devil is going to creep in and usher confusion to what God already told you. And what God said about you is that you are not insecure, but you are in security. Being covered under the blood of Jesus is to be found in security. And so we see here that the woman saw that the tree was good. She saw that it was good and was like, yo, it's good for food. And was like, man, and it looked good on the eyes too. And then the tree, what? Aunt, man, look, this is desirable. Listen, I want it. Now that I know it will make me wise, I want it. And that is what the devil will always do with your insecurities. The devil will always get you to a place to where you can believe that what he's saying is true. But what's true can only be found in a place of security. And security is only found in a place where God is. Your security is only found in a place where God is found. Adam and Eve were covered by their nakedness. It says, now she, uh, she then took this fruit and ate. This is powerful. And then she also gave some to her husband who was also with her. We're not going to talk about this because this kind of hit me different. When I'm reading, I'm like, man, listen, to be honest, even though the woman did eat the fruit first, it, I mean, listen, if the man was with him, how are you going to let your girl talk to the devil like this? Like she over there having conversation. You know, we're not even going to talk about it. So it says now here in verse seven, then both of their eyes were open. Then both of their eyes were open. Not when Eve ate, but when both of them ate. Now both of their eyes were open. They lost the covering that they, went, that they had the moment they disobeyed God. Disobedience will always lead to a loss of covering. Write that down. Disobedience will always lead to a loss of covering. When you disobey God, you land outside of his covering. You land outside of his will. You land outside of the pathway. Now, we all know this, that God works everything for your good. So it does not mean that God doesn't work, but it means you're not in a place of covering. Why do you want to be in a place of covering? Because when you are not in a place of covering, your nakedness is exposed. The Bible then says that their eyes were open. Why were they open? Because they were outside of the covering of God. This is so good. So we get to see here that when their both their eyes were open and they knew now that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves in clothes, this kind of sat with me different. Because it's like we have to get to a place where we understand this. In verse 25 of chapter 2, it said that they were naked. It said they were naked and unashamed. Then they allowed the devil to get in. And as they allowed the devil to get in, he manipulated their thoughts and made them feel like they were doing something right when they were really doing something wrong. And then while they were doing something wrong, they landed in a place where now their eyes were open and now their eyes were open. Now they can actually see their nakedness. This whole story is about how you see yourself. The devil will always desire and move you in a way to where you can change how you see yourself. He will always do that. He will always try to change how you see yourself. This whole message of insecurities is talking about how God sees you and how you see yourself. The beautiful thing about this is nothing you could ever do would change how God sees you. And it doesn't change who you are. They were still naked then and now they're still naked now. But the difference in now between then and now is how they see themselves. Because of their sin, it put them in a position to where they were not able to see themselves properly. Your sin, when you sin against God and you step out of God's covering in disobedience, you will always land in a place to where you are not able to experience God's plan for your life. This is so unfortunate because as they were here and now they see themselves naked, I'm reminded of how 
They were naked all along, but how they looked at themselves was the deciding factor that changed the game, y'all. The reason why some of us feel insecure today and we're insecure in who we are and who God has called us and created us to be is not the devil's fault. It's not even God's fault. But it's when we allow sin to get into our lives. Some of my sisters can relate to this. When you sleep with a man, you weren't insecure, but then now all of a sudden your insecurities came up out of nowhere. Now you're like uber insecure. You're hella insecure. You don't even know what's going on. To my fellas, like you're in a position, right? And you land yourself in the wrong spot with the wrong group of brothers at the wrong time. And they all gang up on you, make you feel like you're less than a man. And you open up your heart to people that God never intended for you to open up your heart to. And now you feel insecure. Why? Because when you allow the devil into a place of your nakedness, he will expose you by exposing the covering that God had placed on top of you. The devil's goal, his mandate, and his prerogative is to remove God's covering from your life. It is the covering that keeps you inside the promise of God. It's the covering that covers your nakedness. It's the covering that prevents you from stepping into a place to where God can't redeem you, to where you can't come back. It's the covering of God that protects Adam and Eve stumble because they stepped outside the covering. And the thing that made them insecure wasn't that they were insecure from the start, but it was that that, that they became insecure because they allowed the devil to speak to them from a place of insecurity. You're not built for this. You can't handle this. How on earth could you now move on? How could you share the gospel when you stumble like this? You can't. You're not built for the devil will always come at you from a place that you're most vulnerable and naked. It says here, and they sewed, they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves cloth. Isn't it interesting how not only did they not see themselves as naked, but when they allowed the devil to get in, now they stepped outside of the covering and now they could see what their nakedness was. This is what happens to a lot of us. We get into a position where we allow the devil to get in. And once the devil gets in, he changes our perspective. And now we no longer see ourselves the way God has created. And so we desire to do what? Cover ourselves with our own abilities. Adam and Eve covered themselves by their own merit. They stepped outside of the covering of God and thought to themselves, well, maybe I can cover myself. And this is what happens with us and our insecurities. Sometimes we'll step outside the covering of God. And then we think that we, we can just cover ourselves. What does it look like to cover yourself? Well, you know what? Um, I, I didn't think that, you know, I was going to do that. But, you know, what? I'm going to cover it with a lie. Or maybe I didn't think that, that, that I could actually build something. But you know what? I can do it, so I'm gonna fake it like I'm good like that. Or, or maybe I wanted to go and spend time with some people who, who I think are my friends, so I'm gonna change myself a little bit to fit in, but, but you really don't fit in. It, it's when you change who you are to fit something that God never intended you to do. It's where you cover yourself. I know we're running out of time here, but we're gonna jump right into this. And so it says now that they went to cover themselves and they made themselves loincloths. And as they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid them from the presence of the Lord and presence of God among the trees in the garden. Now, this was something else. Not only did they cover themselves, but they covered themselves in the place they were originally created to be unashamed in. See, where God created you, he created you as a person that he desired to prosper. He created you in such a way that he wants you to, to fulfill your God-given mandate, your God-given ability. But in order for you to do that, you have to realize something. God placed you where you were supposed to be for a reason. And he gave you what you have now today for a reason. Some of you are like, man, I just get so shy when I'm around people. I can't make friends. He made you that way for a reason. So you say, man, I just don't know how I'm going to go up there and minister the gospel. He made you like this for a reason. Some of you stutter a lot and you don't know how to do it like Moses. He made you like that for a reason. How God made you and where he placed you is the place where God will ordain you. 
That is the place where God will pick you up and turn you into something that you never knew that you could be. When God says, I have, I'm here to cover you, and I desire to cover you in your nakedness. I want to cover you in your place of insecurity. This is when God is saying, listen, don't worry about how I made you. Just worry about what I'm calling you to do. Because if you will do what I called you to do, you'll realize that I have built you for this the whole time. You can't hide in what God has created you to stand out from. Write that down. You can't hide from what God has created you to stand out from. And God created them to stand out of, of the garden, to stand out in a place that they were put in. They were made there to stand out and to be different. God made you to stand out and to be different. You were not meant to fit in. You were meant to fit out. God made you different because you are a change that the world has not seen yet. So the devil comes in to pervert this understanding that although you might be naked in a certain place of your life and you might feel insecure, it is the security of God that says, listen, I have covered you under the blood. I'm going to end on this point here. There's so much to go through, but I want to, I want to say this is very, very important. I realized something. That although they were in a place of sin and rebellion against God and what God had called them to do, Jesus knew. He knew that because they stepped out of his covering, that he had to go back and send covering again. It says here in verse, in verse 21, it says, And the Lord God made Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. This verse teaches us that God knew that as he was casting them out of the garden, that they would need covering to move forward, to receive him, to live their life, to step out by faith, to do great things in Jesus' name, to be redeemed. God knew they would need covering. And so he spilt the blood of an animal to cover them. And this is like typology for what, Jesus would then ultimately do on the cross. And what God ended up doing was he shed the blood of that animal to cover them so that when Jesus would come, Jesus would shed his blood on the cross to cover you. Just because the Bible says that we are born into sin and shaped in iniquity and sin that our mothers conceive us, we have to understand now we are born into sin and there's no avoiding these things. But what we do know is that we are redeemed by Christ. What we do know is that God has created us to overcome by the blood of the Lamb. It is because Jesus died on the cross. Even though Adam and Eve sinned and their example of what nakedness looks like is something that we can take into our future, it's so important that we understand that God has made us to be naked and unashamed. And it's in that place that we can find where God wants us to be. If I could give one word to you guys today, that you would take home from this lesson, it is this. You were built for where you are at. And God has given you what you need to come out of it. Adam and Eve was in a place where their nakedness took them further than they wanted to go. But I want you to know today that God has created a path of redemption not just for all humanity, but for each and every single one of us. Father, what am I going to do with this insecurity? I'm feeling this certain type of way. I have fear in my heart. I don't know which way I should go. Father, what I'm doubting, Father, what do I do with all this insecurity? The Lord is telling you today to trust him, to be obedient to him, and to stay in his covering. God wants to take you to a place that you've never been to before. But following him is completely contingent upon you. And I'm praying today that you decide that you decide to follow him in spite of your insecurities. You decide to follow him in spite of what you've been going through. You decide to follow him in spite of at times you might feel naked and afraid and ashamed of who God has called you to be, that you will decide to follow him, that you would not deviate and go to a place that he did not send you to, but that he would stay that you would stay in a place of covering with him. I'm believing God that this word reached the person that it was meant to reach here tonight. And I know that sometimes it's not one of the easiest things to share, but sometimes we feel naked often and we just don't tell people, oh, I feel real naked right now. 
I'm feeling really exposed, not just in my sin, but in my insecurities. And I want to pray for you today if that is you, where you understand, where we can understand together as a body, as the body of Christ, that yes, even though these things happen the way that they had happened, sometimes the devil will get the best of you, but my prayer is that he would not take a hold of you in Jesus' name, that God would redeem you and restore you and place your feet back on Heinz's feet, on, on, on a rock, on a place where it's unshakable, where you become steadfast and unmovable. Sometimes you have to go through things just for God to redeem you. But I want you to understand today, no matter what you go through, Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross for you. And that blood is a representation of a covering that will cover you unconditionally. That if you would repent, that if you would reach out to Jesus, that you, if you would cry out to God like, Father, save me, that he would save you because of your repentance. It is repentance that restores man through Jesus Christ. And my prayer is that the devil would not have his way in you, in Jesus' name. I want to pray for you guys. Father, we thank you, God, for today. Father, it's a, it's a beautiful day. A day where we can come together to learn more about you and your word. To understand that at times we might be naked, Father. Let us not be unashamed of our nakedness. Father, help us to be bold, unashamed for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where we can step out by faith knowing that you have created us to be who you have called us to be. Father, we thank you, God, for what you're doing in our lives because we know it is a perfect work, a complete work lacking nothing. I pray, God, that every word that was said here tonight reached the heart of those that were here to listen and those who needed to hear it, that it would plant deep in their hearts so that it would germinate and produce good fruit. Father, we thank you, God, for what you're doing in our lives because we know that it is perfect. Father, I thank you for each and every single person here. I pray that you would increase in us, increase in our faith, and help us to be great men and women of God that you have called us to be. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, amen. Amen, y'all. Y'all, amen. Give God some praise. I believe that God is doing an amazing thing in your life. And I pray that this series about insecure uh, has been something to give you a different perspective on what it means to be insecure to trust God in spite of what you're going through, to realize your security is found in Jesus, to realize that God speaks to you in a place of your insecurities, to realize that sometimes you might be low, you might feel like 1%, but God has made you, that God only wants 100% of your 1%, to realize that at times you might feel naked in your insecurities, that God is there to cover you in spite of your nakedness. I love you guys. Thank you so much for coming to Bible study tonight. Please stick around on whatever platform you're on. Join us on Zoom. Join us online on Zoom. We're going to do in our after chat, and it's going to be great. We're going to talk about this word, and I pray it's a blessing to you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I love y'all. We're going to dive into this after chat. Uh, Tammy's going to give away with announcements. All right, y'all.